this thing that we started with um, when we were talking about what realignment is, right? That there's meant to be services, there's meant to be treatment available, there's meant to be things that help people get out and stay out of jail, um, and also money for, for billing, right? So I'm wondering if people can talk a little bit about um, what some of the, the thornier things are in that relationship between services and imprisonment. Um, and what does it mean for sheriffs to increasingly, through this program, be offering services inside of jails rather than out in our communities? And I'm wondering, also, Moel, if we can move you in to talk a little bit about Alameda County, because that's the budget, the way that the budget's been going around realignment dollars there is really skewed as well. So I'm not sure who wants to start, John, maybe you want to start us off? Well, with the realignment, what, what uh, Ours is kind of a little different than the AB 109 because he already has all the services for that in the community and in the jail. So it's a little bit more different in Contra Costa County because uh, what, he's, what he's talking about doing now is building a jail where he already has the land and building up another jail for violent offenders to seek services, not just the AB 109, but the violent offender too. And we were trying to uh, swim to, uh, we're trying to get these one-stop centers so that people are coming home have a, a one-stop center where they can get all the services they, they need, AB 109, uh, whatever it be, it's just a one-stop shop. So the little little things there are, are that are different is he's, he's using now the violent offenders, uh, people looking at a lot of time that, like I think, may or may not even take the services due to the fact that they're looking at a lot of time. And we're trying to tell them what would be the point of serving these people when they're, they're going away for 10 or 15 years. By the time they come home, there'll probably be some more services for them. So he, he's just kind of hitting us, the sheriff is hitting us with, uh, with along with the realignment process, with seeing all the service providers that fought in, in the jail expansion the first time. He's done swooped it around and, and stole the power from us with using the super service providers, allowing them to come into the jail and do the services that are needed, but he's not letting them go into the violent offenders. And then we have a, a, a big wide uh, cease fire wall. Uh, we deal with the two uh, target groups there in North and Central uh, with gun violence. So um, we just did a big, uh, it's a wiretapping and, and arrested a whole bunch of guys and they're trying to do bail reform and let these guys right back out. And some of them have got back out and they've been locked back up. But uh, along along the lines of, of what he's done is he, he's seen, he let us do the first jail uh, stop, you know, stopping it from going up. And then uh, we kind of backed off it a little bit and thought, that, okay, we got this done. But really, in, in lights, we didn't have anything. He just found another way to reiterate it and use what we have created as far as the service providers to be in the one stop, and now he wants to put them all in the jail. And he's going for that same inquiry in San Francisco and a bunch of other counties are going for it. So it, it's a fight, but uh, I truly believe that, you know, God is a good God and he's a mighty God. There's a lot of miracles I'm looking at in this room, and uh, he can overcome that jail because we really need more schools, um, services outside that are reliable and dependable, especially in Richmond, I can speak for Richmond. Uh, service providers have their phone numbers on stuff and there's not even people answering the phones or doing anything. So we do see a, a, a thing for the service providers. We do need services, but do we really need another jail to implement these services? I think he should just go forward with the one-stop center and put the services in there to help the people come home. Does everybody know what people are talking about when they say AB 109? AB 109 is, is the realignment. Those are the realignment dollars. And so the idea was that theoretically people who were so-called low level, um, had low level offenses, would be the people who would get realigned, get moved from state. Now, now, what he's done with that is we already have service providers in, in spaces for the AB 109 clients. 
So what he's done now is he's trying to use the violent offenders and get them services, but he's saying he needs somewhere to house them. So well, he just hit us all the way around. And um, it looks good. I'm, I'm ready. The fight is there. Like adversity, I've been told I can't do it because I was stuck filling these jails up. And now here I am stopping them from going up. So God is good. Anybody else want to comment on the, the service inside, outside of jail? Okay. I mean, I think here in San Francisco, we definitely were sort of touted as one of the counties that was putting the most of our realignment dollars into services and prioritizing alternatives, and that was sort of the, the image that we got. And then when the assessment came down, you know, one and a half years after realignment, where did that money actually go? Turns out there was nothing but cuts to services. Turns out that there was, you know, the conditions deteriorated inside. You know, none of none of that 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 stuff actually happened. And in fact, many like you know, folks who work inside the department were the ones who were raising that. We're saying, you know, these really awesome programs that were culturally specific and actually supported people with their reentry. Why were those cut? Why why did those get cut? Um, but what we did see was an increase in probation officers, an increase in people in electronic monitoring, an increase of people who were still being imprisoned, but in different ways. So, so I feel like that's that's just an important piece that we've seen in San Francisco, and also is tricky and is thorny around realignment. We did not see an increase in jail population. We did not see an increase in in, in sort of public safety being compromised by realignment. Those things didn't happen, um, but we just saw a lot more sliminess with the funding going to increase the sort of stronghold of the department on the county. Yes, and for Alameda County, uh, we have to put into context, Rachel touched on it, um, we have Sheriff Airhorn. Now, anyone that knows or has seen uh, terror mafia movies, right, know that there's always in every city, every metropolis, one or two or three people that are like the Don, right? In Alameda County, is Sheriff Aaron. <laughs> Sheriff, no, no, this is, I'm not, I'm not laughing because it's scary. This is, anyone that knows that's been in Alameda County, I'm a newcomer to Alameda County, but I speak to some elected officials, to some people that work in the intermediary, and to the people on, on the ground, formerly incarcerated immigrants. Sheriff Aaron is a, is a wrecking ball in terms of breaking up communities. I think it's important for us to, to I'm raising that, because when we're talking about Alameda County, most of the resources that are going in terms of reentry and realignment is going to the sheriff. I mean, this last year, he had a blank check. The year before, he had a blank check. So we have $29 million that was going for year uh, three, right? Out of the $29 million, he got almost $23 million. And I can even argue that he could probably get some more, but if he has his own programs out there that are part of the sheriff, that, and he applied for it through innovation fund. So what we're talking about is about a sheriff in the county that people are afraid of. I mean, elected officials are afraid of Sheriff Ahern. And it's, it's important to, to, to recognize that one person or a group of persons that have instilled fear in the community can be in power for so long. In fact, the, the, the current jail in Santa Rita is not only owned by the prior sheriff, and he's talking about making the courthouse, the Alameda courthouse, in, that, in Santa Rita. He wants services to be in Santa Rita. He wants to build a new jail. I mean, not a new jail, but he's talking about a new courthouse with the district attorney office in right next to Santa Rita. In terms of services going on in, inside of Santa Rita, people that have been deemed a threat, uh, at risk, what they like to call, people that are involving gangs and people that have serious offenses or have been charged with serious offenses, are the ones who don't have access to treatment or services. So it's a contradiction because he wants to be the one stop. He wants to create the one stop in Alameda County where everyone can come to, 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 to him. He's gonna probably be housed within the sheriff's department. And then the other part of what we've been involved in in Alameda County at this moment is that we're trying to create in a community advisory board to have some tea time where Coco County did. In fact, their ability, in my opinion, to, to fight the jail and, and be able to defeat Livingston in the preliminary stages had to do with having a, not only a community that stood up and, and came out to the occasion and fought hard and, and were mobilizing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of community members from all over um, West and East County, but also their ability to create a community advisory board that has some teeth. And I know many of us have been in this room, I know a lot of us here, when we hear the word community advisory board, we, we sometimes cringe because we recognize that they don't really mean anything most of the time because they don't have any teeth or because they don't have no way of really influencing people in power. And what we're trying to do in Alameda County is trying to shift how we do business 
try to put those resources in the community. As someone that's been, I'm gonna step back, someone that's been in Santa uh, Clara County Jail, in San Mateo County Jail, in San Francisco County Jail for almost three years, it's supposed to be the more progressive county jail. No county jail, no facility. I don't care if you have the best case workers, the best uh, doctors in it, and the best educators in the county jail are safe or productive or conducive towards rehabilitation. In fact, it, it, when I hear about that, I, I'm always thinking about that they, 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 they've been able to re refine language, co-opt our, our language, our resources, our messaging, our talking points, right. and then use it to be able to get their funding for law enforcement for re repressive measures. And we have to stop that. And that's one of the things that we move forward is we need to continue to figure out a way to unite our messaging. And, 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 and last thing, now let me the county, it, um, uh, Adrian does not care about the immigration community release fit. So there's a, there tends to be a lot of um, DUI checkpoints, right? And a lot of different things in the community that come up that are done by the sheriff's department that's trying to capture not only people, but the resources, the cars. The, what, you know, when you get all these fines coming up, so there's a lot of stuff going on, and I just want to paint that picture. That even though we're not building a county jail, it's equally scary to have most of the resources going back to the sheriff, back to the probation department, and not necessarily to the community members and family members that need it. Sure, yeah, in our county, um, in the last few years, our county, San Mateo County, cut about 700 positions. So they either laid off or closed positions, with, and it was 700 jobs, essentially. Meanwhile, uh, our sheriff's department has been expanded, and it's the same story. It's uh, human, HSA, Human Services Agency got cut, Child support where I worked um, went from over 100 employees to under 90. Um, so you have essentially 80 something people handling child support cases for the entire county. Um, things like this are happening in every county. And I like what uh, was said earlier about you know our rhetoric being co-opted about the liberal progressive keywords being used uh, against us. We need to really be careful about that. When I when I talk to uh, people you know who I feel are kind of on my side of the aisle, if you will. Um, sometimes having that conversation about stopping jails is harder with them because they've bought into what they've heard. They've bought into, oh, but this is going to be a safer jail. Our, our new jail is going to be LEED certified or what have you. It's going to be green. So, you know, <laughs> people have really bought into that. And it's strangely enough, when I talk to people who are fiscally conservative, it's much easier to sell, to, to, to sell our message to them. Like they, you know, maybe they don't care as much about the social justice issue which you know, it w is a conversation that needs to happen, but uh, it's easier to sell them on why this jail is wrong because they haven't bought into that. And I think we need to do a good job, we need to do a better job of making sure that our, our allies are not buying into it because uh, I know in my county, all of our progressive quote unquote politicians uh, who have any power or say in whether or not this jail gets built, funded, filled, uh, maintained, uh, open. All of those people are quote unquote Dems, progressive, what have you. And so there's a lot of reluctance on the part of the establishment, Democratic Party in my county, the establishment progressive movement in my county to go up against their leaders in a way. So we really need to make sure that we do enough grassroots groups work to uh, kind of uh, turn that around and stop the co-opting of essentially our own people and get the the guy across the bridge to, again, the people who may not be in the fight for the issues that we want them to be in it for, but who are still willing to stand next to us and fight the jail.